Most sewists know that you can sew and finish seams with a serger, but how many know that you can also do hems? In this video, we'll use some overlooked features of your serger to make four styles of hems in knit fabrics, some with creative opportunities you won't find on a conventional sewing machine. You'll also learn how to use a cover stitch to produce a knit hem that's identical to ready to wear. If you don't have a serger or cover stitch, check out my companion video on how to hem knits using a regular sewing machine. There are links to the tools and supplies used in this video in the description. Let's begin with the banded hem. The banded hem is made with a folded band of fabric that you serge to the raw edge of the garment, creating a hem. Begin by cutting out the band. Measure the hem circumference of your sewn but unfinished garment, then add twice the seam allowance. That is the length of the strip you will cut. Then decide how deep the finished hem will be. Double that and add twice the seam allowance. That is the width of the strip you will cut. Cut out a strip of knit fabric length along the direction of greatest stretch. This can be the same fabric as the rest of the garment or can be something else, for example, a rib knit, as long as it is a similar weight and is as stretchy as the original garment. Because the band adds a bit of length to the garment, you may want to trim the original hem allowance, leaving a one quarter inch, six millimeter seam allowance for the serger stitch. To prepare the hem band, bring the short edges together, right sides facing each other. This creates a loop. Using a conventional sewing machine, a straight stitch and a ballpoint needle, join the short edges with a one quarter inch, six millimeter seam allowance. Press the seam allowance open. Fold the loop in half lengthwise, wrong sides together and right sides facing outward, and press. Pin or clip the loop to the hem edge, right sides together, lining up raw edges. Clips are safer than pins because they cannot get accidentally caught in the cutter blades the way pins can. Avoid matching the seam allowance of the loop to those of the garment for a flatter hem. Using a three or four thread overlock stitch, serge the band to the hem edge. Begin by angling in until the raw edges just graze the cutter blade. A three thread overlock has more stretch, the four thread overlock is stronger. When you reach the starting point, align the starting and ending stitches. Your serger presser foot may have needle alignment markings to help with this. To end the hem, stitch off at an angle away from the needles and remove from the machine. The cutter blades will trim and enclose the initial thread tail. Using an embroidery needle, bury the thread tail inside the serger stitching and trim the excess. Fold the serge seam allowance to one side and press. The banded hem is very easy to do and since the hem is a separate piece of fabric, you have a lot of design opportunities. The disadvantage is that the serge seam allowances can be bulky. The remaining hem techniques in this video begin the same way. Set your iron to an appropriate temperature for your fabric. Fold and press the hem allowance towards the inside or wrong side of the garment. Measure as you go for the most consistent fold. This will help you avoid gaps or missed stitches later at the serger. Fold the seam allowances in different directions inside the hem fold. This avoids bulk and helps the hem feed easier through the machine. Press by lifting and setting down the iron. Don't slide it back and forth to avoid distorting the fabric. A press cloth also helps avoid distortion by preventing the iron from directly contacting the fabric. After pressing, allow the fabric to cool on the ironing board before moving it to the machine to allow the fold to set. The serger flat lock stitch creates a flat, non-overlapping seam. One side has a loopy appearance created by the serger loopers, the other side a ladder effect created by the needle thread. In this video, we'll use it for hemming. Set up your serger for a two thread flat lock stitch if it supports it, or a three thread flat lock stitch if it does not. 
check your machine's owner's manual. I have a video on the flat lock stitch if you'd like to learn more. The link is in the description. Use a stitch length of 2.5 as a starting point and disengage the cutter blade. Use only the left hand needle. Begin by folding up and pressing the hem allowance as presented earlier in the video. Then fold the hem allowance up towards the wrong side a second time. Take extra care to ensure that the raw edge runs right up against the second fold line. This is essential for a successful hem. You can secure this folded edge with pins or clips. After you have finished both folds, the hem will look like this when viewed from the side. To begin the stitch, raise the needle with the hand wheel, then raise the presser foot. Position the fold under the needle, then lower the presser foot. Lower the needle with the hand wheel to check that it is positioned correctly. Surge the hem, carefully aligning the outer folded edge alongside the disengaged cutter blade. If your serger has a mark on the presser foot indicating the position of the cutter blade, use that as a reference. You may need to position the folded edge anywhere from 1 8 inch, 3 millimeters, away from the cutter blade to right up against it. The heavier the fabric, the wider the gap you should leave. Practice first on some scrap fabric. When you reach the starting point, overlap for a stitch or two. If your presser foot has needle alignment markings, use them to align the starting and ending stitches. Raise the needles to full height with the hand wheel, raise the presser foot, and remove the hem from the serger. You may need to move the fabric out from under the needle, then lower the presser foot and serge off a thread tail. Grab the garment above and below the line of stitching and gently pull to flatten out the stitch. You will see looped stitches appear on the outside of the garment and ladder stitches on the inside. Bring all thread tails to the inside. Bury the ending thread tail in the serger loops and trim the excess. Press the hem to smooth out the flat lock stitch. The flat lock hem has a distinctive look. You can use the loops on the outside as a design element, especially with different colors or types of thread. However, it can be tricky to adjust the machine as well as to sew a consistent stitch. Sergers can also produce a blind hem similar to a conventional sewing machine. You will need a blind hemmer foot for your serger, which positions and guides the fabric for the blind hem stitch. Set up your machine for a two or three thread flat lock stitch. Check your owner's manual to see if it recommends the left or the right hand needle. Otherwise, choose the right hand needle. If you want to know more about the flat lock stitch, I have a detailed video. There is a link in the description. And if you find this tutorial helpful, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Install the blind hem foot. Choose a stitch length of about four millimeters, a width of about one quarter inch, six millimeters, and make sure the cutter blade is engaged. Begin by folding up and pressing the hem allowance as presented earlier in the video. Then fold the hem a second time. The hem allowance folds towards the right side of the garment, allowing about one quarter inch, six millimeters, of the inside hem to extend outwards. Viewed from the side, the fold will resemble the letter Z. Do not press the second fold. Pin through all layers along the length of the hem. Place the hem into the serger, wrong side facing upwards, with the folded edge of the Z against the guide on the hemming foot. Begin serging. The needle should just catch the edge of the fold and the cutter blade should just trim a small bit of the raw hem edge. Do not allow the cutter blade to cut into the fold. If your blind hem foot has an adjustment screw, turn it to position the fold line at the proper distance from the cutter blade. If you guide the fold too far to the left, the needle will not catch the fold. If you guide too far to the right, 
threads will show on the outside of the garment. A perfect blind stitch will not show threads on the outside, but a small amount of thread showing is also okay. And although threads showing on the outside aren't considered perfect, you can create this ladder effect on purpose as a design detail. There is no sewing police. You do you. When you reach the starting point, overlap for a stitch or two. If your presser foot has needle alignment markings, use them to align the starting and ending stitches. Raise the needles to full height with the hand wheel, lift the presser foot, and remove the hem from the serger. Open the fabric and gently pull to flatten out the stitch. Looped stitches will appear on the inside and ladder stitches will be barely visible, or not at all, on the outside. Bury the ending thread tail in the serger loops and trim the excess. Press the hem to smooth out the stitch. With matching thread, the serger blind hem can be invisible on heavier or textured fabrics. But like the flat lock hem, it can be tricky to do because you must set up a flat lock stitch and stitch consistently. It also requires a special presser foot. The cover stitch hem is the same hem that ready to wear garments often use. The outside has two or three parallel lines of top stitching and the inside hem has a looped appearance similar to a serged seam. To make a cover stitch hem, you need a dedicated cover stitch machine or a serger with cover stitch capability. Set up your cover stitch machine or serger to operate in cover stitch mode. Most cover stitch machines perform either a three or a four thread cover stitch. The three thread cover stitch has two lines of top stitching and has loops on the wrong side. The four thread cover stitch has three lines of top stitching. It is stronger, but it is bulkier and has less stretch. Begin by folding up and pressing the hem allowance as presented earlier in this video. Place the wrong side of the hem towards the feed dogs, right side facing upwards, and align the folded edge with the appropriate seam allowance guideline. I have marked a guideline for a one inch hem, two and a half centimeters, with some tape. Lower the presser foot and begin stitching. Guide the edge along the seam allowance guideline for an even hem. At seam lines, nudge slightly with a stiletto to help feed the fabric or stop with the needle down, then raise and lower the presser foot to allow the fabric to relax. When you reach the starting point, overlap for a stitch or two. If your presser foot has needle alignment markings, use them to align the starting and ending stitches. Raise the needles to full height with the hand wheel, raise the presser foot, and remove the hem from the machine. Some cover stitch machines require you to release the needle and looper threads while removing the fabric. Check your owner's manual. I have a video showing the process in detail for the machine in this video. A cover stitch unravels easily unless the ends are finished, so you should tie off both ends. Use a hand needle to draw all needle threads to the inside of the garment, tie them off, and trim. Give the hem a final press. After pressing, you can trim away any excess hem allowance down to the line of stitching. Ideally, the cover stitch completely encloses the raw edge, hence the name cover stitch. But even some ready-to-wear clothing sometimes has some excess. The cover stitch produces the most professional result of all because it's identical to ready-to-wear clothing. Furthermore, a cover stitch will not tunnel the way a twin needle stitch on the conventional machine can. The disadvantage is that it requires a specialized cover stitch machine or a serger with cover stitch capability. Even sergers that can do cover stitch usually require some adjustment steps to switch into and out of cover stitch mode. For more videos like this one, like and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated.